Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church, as in just a few minutes we'll celebrate the Eucharist on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. I'm Leslie, and Scott and I will be leading the music this evening. While only the cantor is able to sing during this phase of reopening the church, the music and the readings for this Mass can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at this, liturgy, this liturgy is Father Schoberly, and preaching is Deacon Mark Shekels. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Well, we're here, fourth week of Advent. The wreath is finally fully lit. It is leading us on ever closer to Christ and his coming. And we are going to be asked, will we follow where he leads? we follow the symbols and the signs and the people he has put before us. We should consider that at all times, and tonight as we reflect on that, let us also ask God for mercy for the times we have not followed where he led. Lord Jesus, Messiah 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Alleluia. And they shall name him Emmanuel. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God." Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed her. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord How can this be? be. Once two friends were walking down the sidewalk on a busy street during rush hour. There were all sorts of noises in the city, cars honking, feet shuffling, people talking. I know that these days that's hard to imagine, but bear with the story. And amid all the noise, one of the friends turned to the other and said, I hear a cricket. No way, her friend responded. How could you hear a cricket with all of this noise? You must be imagining it. Besides, I've never seen a cricket in the city. No, really, I do hear a cricket. I'll show you. She stopped for a moment, then led her friend across the street to a big cement planter with a tree in it. Pushing back the leaves, she revealed a tiny brown cricket. That's amazing, said her friend. You must have super hearing. No, she said, my hearing is the same as yours. There's no secret. And the stunned woman replied with a look of amazement, how can this be? The first woman replied, watch, I'll show you. She reached into her pocket, pulled out some loose chains and threw it on the sidewalk. Amid all the noise of the city, the hustle and bustle, Everyone within 30 feet immediately turned their head to see where the sound of the money was coming from. See, she said, it's all a matter of what you're listening for. With our busy lives, our rushing down the highways and byways, preoccupied with our own inner thoughts and expectations, what do we hear? Today, 
we hear a story of a young woman named Mary, visited by an angel. She is asked to do something extraordinary. Mary is asked to be the mother of our Savior. Confused, amazed, probably very frightened, Mary asks the real question, how can this be? More than this one question, I'm sure there were a lot of difficulties running through her mind. She might have been concerned about logistical problems. How could she explain the pregnancy to her family, her neighbors, to Joseph? She might have questioned her abilities, wondering why she was chosen and not someone else. She might have wondered about her future, trying to determine how her response would affect her life and her marriage. She may have questioned her own sanity, pondering if the message was truly from heaven or a trick of her imagination or even wishful thinking. What is clear is that Mary initially feels unworthy. She proclaims she is unable to accept this role since she has had no relations with a man. However, the angel assures her that God would wonderfully solve this dilemma through the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Gabriel informs her nothing will be impossible for God. Despite her questions, despite her fears, despite her feelings of inadequacy, Mary boldly responds, May it be done to me according to your word. As we know, Mary, with the help of God, magnificently fulfilled the task she was given. The celebrations of the coming Christmas season remind us that Mary fulfilled her role as the mother of our Savior. God's choice of Mary also reminds us that God has chosen us for roles in this continuing story of salvation. The sacraments, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, that give us our identity as Christians, also give us the roles that God expects us to fulfill. And beyond those sacraments, like Mary, we are called to bring Christ into the world in everything that we do. Our role and our mission is to hasten the coming of God's kingdom, a kingdom of love, justice, peace, by living as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, all too often, we get stuck and never move beyond how can this be? The daunting challenge of welcoming Christ, building the kingdom, going out and proclaiming the gospel, bring to us questions, fears, feelings of inadequacy, and we never manage to move beyond ourselves. We may question how this one person, us, in the city of Chicago, could possibly be Christ to one another. We may have concerns about the pandemic and our feelings of isolation, fear, anxiety may overwhelm us. We may have doubts, wondering if our gifts and talents could really make a difference. During the Advent season, it becomes crucial that we make the time to listen so that we are better able to hear the small chirp of the cricket in the bush across the street. We are able to hear the voice of God quietly whispering to us, nothing is impossible. God does not hand us our task and then abandon us. Just the opposite. As Christmas approaches, we are reminded that God takes on human flesh, becoming one of us in all things except sin, so that we may fully know how much God truly loves us. Like Mary, the Spirit of God also comes upon us to inspire, assist, guide us on that path of holiness. 
Mary's story is a story of God reaching out to his people, a story that continues to unfold as he reaches out to us. This is why it is important that we make time before the arrival of Christmas to prepare and create a space of silence to listen to our God. And silence is not the absence of noise, but the refined tuning of the soul to the sounds and movements that usually go unnoticed. It is my experience that so very often God starts in something unseeable and plainly comes to us in the things of this world. It is there in the silence that we find the voice of our God, a God that loves us and reminds us that nothing is impossible. May we find the wisdom, the strength, the courage to look beyond the question of how can this be and boldly repeat the Blessed Mother's acclamation, may it be done according to your word. Together, let us profess our faith, responding to our baptismal promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Rejoicing in God's promise to become present to us in Christ, let us pray for those who seek the face of the God of Jacob that the Church will continually discover new ways to make Christ present in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that peace will reign in the hearts of all who celebrate the Nativity of the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who search for shelter will find the housing they need for themselves and their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that those who find the holidays a difficult time because of the recent loss of a loved one will find comfort and consolation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those Christians who are persecuted for the faith they hold. Strengthen them in their courageous witness and bring peace to their troubled land, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists who have worked so hard to develop and test the coronavirus vaccines, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will experience healing and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Trudy Gorecki and all those who have died, especially Rita Payton, will rejoice as they are welcomed to the heavenly Jerusalem, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in silence, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pause a moment for those of you who are joining us online, if you would like to say your prayers out loud as we hear inside the church, recall what you may be saying and recall what is still being raised up by God in our hearts.
For all of these prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Mary and Joseph, today we rejoice in your promise to send the Christ among us. Hear our prayer voiced in his name, Emmanuel, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. For you are one God forever and ever. Amen. Because we are not able to gather your financial offerings in the usual way, please drop them in one of the metal boxes mounted on the wall near the baptismal font as you head out today. You who are joining us from on home may mail in your contributions to the parish office or donate online by clicking on the donate button of the parish website. As always, we thank you for your generosity and support and ask God's blessing and generosity be upon each of you. sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, may the Holy Spirit sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who Who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but but deliver deliver us us from from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So as we continue through this time of COVID, we are reminded that there is a special procedure for communion. Please follow the directions for the ushers who will invite you to come to the end of your pew where they will put sanitizer on your hands that you should rub in. And as you move into the aisle, make sure you're socially distancing like six feet from the person ahead of you. As you approach the Eucharistic minister, please extend your hands We will say the body of Christ, you will say amen. And once you've received the body of Christ, please then move to one of the yellow decals, which is six feet from the place of communion. And there, lower your mask and consume. Put the mask back up and continue back to your pews. Thank you for your help in keeping everyone safe during this time of COVID. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I'm not worthy worthy that you should should enter under my roof, but only only say the the word word and my soul shall be healed. Behold this 
this cup we take will save us from all sin. This precious cup God sends to wash will nourish us within. Will nourish us within. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The schedule of the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses is listed on the front cover of today's bulletin that you'll find on the front of the parish website, oldstmaries.com.
which is where you'll have every other newsletter and everything else. Registration for in-person attendance at Mass on Christmas Eve and day is now open, although the four o'clock is mostly all full. Uh, the number of persons we can accommodate in each, at each is limited. Advanced registration is required. You may register attend the Christmas Masses at oldstmarys.com or call the parish office. There will not be any walk-ups for the Masses on Christmas. Let me say that again, no walk-ups for the Masses on Christmas. We want to make sure we're completely ready and everything is completely sanitized. So we need to know who's going to be here and we encourage you to be here 10 minutes ahead of time, 10 minutes ahead. Um, all the Christmas Masses, of course, if you have any inkling of sickness of you and your family or your household, or if you've been traveling out of state and are not outside the quarantine zone, um, remember that all our Masses will be live streamed at oldstmarys.com. It's also the reason for the 10 minutes is to make sure we have everyone have time for protocols we will also have reserved seating. We will be reserving the seats so you won't just walk in and the ushers won't tell you where to go. They will know where you're going to go and you'll, you'll go to your assigned pews. That's for Christmas. Also, every household of the parish is invited to create their own tree ornament for the parish Christmas tree, something homemade, a family Christmas chain, a repurposed old ornament, a handmade or new ornament, something your family can make together. And you can take a look at the tree outside where many have been added already. Copies of our 2021 Catholic Extension Society calendar are available in the Commons. You may also pick one up during the week by coming to the church office, the door under the blue awning. Um, we still have weekday Masses until Thursday, well, Monday through Wednesday. So uh, you can still sign up for those Masses by going online as well. We ask you at the end of today's liturgy to please remain in your place until the closing hymn concludes. And at that point, the ushers will dismiss you row by row. There's an announcement here. If you're going to be traveling outside, uh, if you're going to be traveling anywhere for Christmas and New Year's to be with friend or family, we wish you safe, travel, safe travels and a blessed and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, a warning to think about what you're doing, to, to figure out the safest way to do what you want to do to honor each other. And please remember to follow the three W's. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and watch your distance from each other. Other than that, have a great week and a great time of preparation for Christmas. The Lord be with you. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is, adv the mass is ended. Our Advent preparations have come to a conclusion. Go now to share the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, for the world be about to turn. My heart has
blessing of the day you bring Let the fires of your justice burn Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near And the world is about to turn Though I am small, my God, my all You will create things in me And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day let the fires of your justice burn Wipe away all tears For the dawn draws near And the world is about to turn Oh, that's her name. That's right, and I probably could have done it from memory, but I just don't trust my memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's better to have it there. But I'm, very, I'm sure it's... Yeah, here it is. It's I tried to kind of look through real quick, and I couldn't find it. Quickly. It's hiding behind. I just flipped it. Okay. I was like, I don't want... Uh, Thank you. I didn't want Zoe to sing the wrong one, and then I just forgot to put it back. Thank you. Good. Absolutely, thanks.